Well, I would say that ethics broadly understood is crucial, um, and I don't know that that's particularly true of our time. In some sense, I think it's always been important. Um, to the extent that ethics, um, as we were discussing, to the extent that ethics is about not just what I should do, should I send five dollars to Oxfam or things like that, if it's not so much just about what I should do as about who who I am and what kind of person I should be and how I go about creating myself as that kind of person, those are questions everybody needs to answer. And it doesn't matter what kind of career you're going to go have later. Um, and you don't have to be in college to encounter those questions, of course, but one of the things that we can provide to our students is a framework through which to approach that question. I mean, all of our students want to know what kind of person they should be. And they're bombarded with cultural messages about all kinds of horrible things, as well as all kinds of good things. And one of the things that we can provide to our students is sort of a place to stand and the language that they need in order to answer that question for themselves. What kind of person should I be? Well, Aristotle's got an opinion. Let's see what he thought. Wow, that is not right. Okay, well now you know something. It turns out that that's not your vision of the person. Well, Aquinas has an answer. Oh, no, that's not it too. Okay, and so by, by giving them things to react to, we give them a way to answer that question for themselves um, without necessarily telling them what kind of person they ought to be. Um, so I think it's important and valuable in that sense. And I also think it is sort of becoming uniquely more important now because a lot of the cultural institutions that we used to have that helped people address those questions and answer those questions are falling apart. The family, the church, um, and just not even really so much the church as community. Um, I just got into a huge debate with my environmental political class the other day about what a community was uh, because we have a very specific political conception of community that involves people committed, committed to each other in their pursuit of the good life. That, that part of my commitment to the good life is sharing in a commitment to help you pursue your good life. And it doesn't mean I'm feeding you or making sure that you're housed. It just means that I am supporting you in your pursuit of the good life. And that is part of my good. And that's what defines a community. That's a classic conception. I mean, that's straight out of Aristotle and it comes all the way up to today in contemporary conservatism and civic republicanism. And they had no idea what I was talking about. Like, like they couldn't even, I had, I had a generational moment where they said that their communities are online. There's one guy who said, well, you know, I like to ski and I have all my, my friends that I met at this website for people who like to ski. And so my community is all over the world. And I'm like, you don't have your community. You don't get to each have your own community. It's not a community if all you have in common is that you like to ski. And, and they really, the class really pushed back on that. They were quite sure that that was. And you know, the very loss of the, the ability to imagine belonging to something, not being me first that then joins something, but the possibility of under, just the possibility of understanding yourself as belonging first, that your identity comes from that, is utterly foreign. And I think it's important to address rights and autonomy and all the rest of that, but I think we've lost a little bit of the counterbalance that made it a more humane way to live. I think it's, it's very satisfying, at least for me, that Holy Cross is sponsoring this particularly. I'm an ethics professor, for one thing, so it's, it's lovely to see my college coming out and showing up in support of my, of my field. Um, but I also think it's important because it's part of our mission. Um, as, a, as an institution, we're defined by a mission statement, and among the things that we're committed to are the idea that our students, by coming here, have agreed to address a certain question. They haven't made a commitment to what they're going to do, but they've agreed to at least consider the possibility that one of the best lives they could have is through being men and women for others, or men and women with others. We're debating the language right now, men and women for or with others. And so by coming here, they've, they've sort of consented to have that discussion. And that frees me up to have that discussion with them in an unlimited way that I, that I was uncomfortable pursuing at a public university previously. Um, and so one of the things that defines the Holy Cross experience here is that mission statement. And it's, there's a lot of emphasis on us as individual professors living the mission, you know, raising the issues, addressing the questions, asking the students to address it. And it's satisfying to see the institution as a whole also living the mission and putting its money where its mouth is and, and whatever else that would be. That the institution itself is acting in ways that demonstrates a concern for the others. And supporting the teaching of ethics seems like a good way to do that. I had never really encountered 
people from most of these colleges. And it was fascinating to, to read the submissions and to see all of the different ways that ethics are being approached at all of these different schools, um, especially some of the military schools. That was really exciting. They have an honor code culture, which is a whole area. Wow, I get to talk to people who are actually doing honor code ethics. That's fascinating. Um, and so it's, it's nice to see people who are at similarly placed schools. They're small, they tend to be, they tend to be smaller, they tend to be more liberal arts. And to, have, and to have people from other schools that are not only honor code, but have a much stronger professional emphasis than we do here at Holy Cross. One of our fundamental commitments is to not guide students too sharply into specific um, professions. You know, we don't have a pre-law major we don't have a business major. You can't major in those kinds of things in the way you can at, can at other schools, which is a strength and a weakness. I mean, that goes both ways. Um, but I'm interested to talk, in talk with people who do professional training, who actually do pre-professional ethics, and see how they do that and how that's different from what I do as the more general human ethics. So that's useful for me, at least. I hope they're benefiting from it, too.